A biobank is a repository that stores biological specimens, usually human biological specimens, so that they can be used for research purposes. Data generated from biological specimens and information generated from genetic analysis are collectively termed as biological data. Before this biological data can be recorded in digital format, biological specimens need to be processed and preserved. Biobanks are structured resources where human biological specimens and their associated information and data generated from genetic analysis are organized systematically. Biobanks facilitate large-scale biological data harvesting and have become an important resource in supporting contemporary medical research including genomics and personalized medicine. In the past, every organization followed its own standards for biospecimen preservation. So obviously these standards varied. In 2005, the National Cancer Institute tried to standardize biospecimen preservation and contributed to the creation of Office of Biobanking and Biospecimen Research and the Annual Symposium for Biospecimen Research Network. In 2009, the first biobank-specific quality standard was published with international support. Ever since, this standard has been applied to many biobanks. Since then, biobanking has evolved through changing regulatory pressures, advances in biological sciences, and technological advances. All biobanks, regardless of whether they store human, animal, or plant biospecimens, are subject to ethics and regulation. In addition to institutional review board and consent documentation, regulatory requirements such as the HIPAA have been set up to define standards and best practices that ensure and safeguard the quality of biospecimens used in research. Emerging fields such as proteomics, genomics, personalized and precision medicine have drastically changed the landscape of biological sciences. In this fast-changing environment, the investigators and type of research projects using biospecimen banking have newer requirements. Technological advances including procedure automation, computational IT, and the advent of the computer chip have revolutionized the management of biobanks. Cheaper computing technology and big data analytical systems have enabled the development, analysis and management of large-scale biological data harvesting. Computerized databases are now used to maintain specimen annotation and location. Tech companies are developing software packages that support biobanks in handling clinical and laboratory data, tracking inventory expenses and consent documentation. Biobanks that have sufficient funding are able to invest in robotics to expedite specimen processing and sampling. The internet has facilitated communication and enabled fruitful collaborations between industry, government regulators and academia. It has also enabled the establishment of virtual biobanks. Biobanks may be present at local, national or international levels. The National Cancer Institute, United Kingdom Biobank and China Kaduri Biobank are well-known local academic institutions. The AIDS Specimen Bank at the University of California, San Francisco, functioning since 1987, is one of the longest existing biobanks. India has a commercial biobank established as a joint venture between Apollo Hospitals and Sarum Innovations. Some other biobanks include the Bangalore Brain Bank, Narayan Rudyalaya Tissue Bank and Stem Cell Research Center, Tata Memorial Hospital Tissue Bank, TCG Life Sciences Biobank, Trans Cells Biologics and Dhruv Dental Stem Cell Bank. Of these, the Bangalore Brain Bank is housed at the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurological Sciences, Nimhans, Bangalore. The UK Biobank is a prospective cohort initiative that comprises 500,000 individuals between the ages of 40 and 69 years. The project collated data on biological samples, physical measures of patient health, and sociological information such as lifestyle and demographics. The UK Biobank is integrated with the NHS database, offering a link to outcomes data. This unified healthcare system enables researchers to link initial baseline measures with disease outcomes. Between baseline measures and disease outcomes, the database also contains multiple sources of medical information, from hospital admissions to clinical visits. The UK Biobank also conducts follow-up trials 
to provide updated information regarding further expanded biological testing. Besides the UK Biobank, the UK government launched the 100,000 Genome Project in 2013 to understand the genetic origin behind common cancers. The NHS patients consented to have their genome sequenced and linked to their health records. The project is a great tool for researchers interested in understanding disease-causing single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs. The size of the data set is its major advantage because it provides the statistical power to discover the associated SNPs even for rare diseases. Private sector involvement in biobanking is expanding its scope. Example, Sapien Biosciences, a personalized medicine company, has a joint venture between Apollo Hospitals and Sarum Innovations that seeks to combine the expertise of the Apollo Hospital Group and Sarum's R&D in novel clinical applications. The company will access the Apollo network for its biobanking needs. Besides institutional biobanks, there are commercial biobanks and non-profit organizations that collect biological data as well. These non-profit organizations are those that conduct health fairs or medical camps with screening of blood pressure, urine and blood tests. Multinational companies that provide services for ancestry determination have commercial biobanks that collect biological specimens like saliva from subjects and test these specimens for the verification of ancestry. So how does this work? If a person wants to undergo testing to verify ancestry, he or she makes a payment to a commercial lab, receives the DNA analysis kit, collects the sample and mails it to the lab where it is analyzed and stored. The data at these biobanks includes data of healthy controls or specimens stored as part of a specific medical condition. The company that has access to this data can sell this data to third parties for research purposes. This, of course, is based on legislation. Today, an increasing need for quicker answers to clinical questions is shifting the clinical research paradigm. This is evident in the greater flexibility in study design and the increasing use of real-world data for research purposes. Experts believe that biobanks, big data analytics, and this greater flexibility in study design might be able to provide quicker answers to several research questions. And with that, we come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.